Okay, so just like the uh, other part of the launcher I was showing off, I'm going to show off um, uh, basically my work on getting the resize handler to work for the mod pack view of this. And this, this is basically the view is designed to uh, show information about the mod packs. If you click it, it changes information. It's still a little bit of work left on it, but uh, it's looking nice now. Um, so we can resize this way. It works mostly, most of you may not notice, but there's a slight gapping issue right here that I still gotta work on. Uh, it's mainly caused by it resizing this panel a little smaller than it should be. I'm working on a min-max system for it right now. But it also resizes the panel to go up and down here. I still gotta do this area over here. This won't be much more work in order to get working. I literally just have to grab the table view and drop it down and then grab the, the news button and, and scale it down. Uh, the code for getting this to work was a bit tricky. Um, I mean, it's basic algebra in order to get this to work. I mean, you basically, if I want to move down, I just have to increase this panel size going down and then I just have to increase these by the difference and this starting point, the height and the spacer, and then you move it and it works. Um, although I coded everything so that if somebody later comes through here and decides to change this entire layout as long as they keep the general locations of things it'll work but if they change the size of how tall this was where these buttons were if they put something else below it if they move like say the this panel left or right it will still resize correctly uh, in other words i future proofed it slightly uh, of course, whoever ends up uh, adjusting this will still have to come through and uh, recode some parts of this. I uh, also need to get rid of that. Uh, this this whole code is handled by uh, two sections. There is a with listener. So in JavaFX, unlike Swing and AWT, you don't listen for a resize event. You listen for a property change event. Um, this is basically this is what it's called, change listener. So every time the width changes, it simply tells the old a new value, and then you just got to handle the code based on that. You also, if you're not familiar with this, you want to make sure that you don't do anything if the old scene width was zero value, because this event gets fired as soon as the GUI is initialized, because that panel was originally size zero when it was instantiated, then the height and width were set, and the event still gets fired. I, I wish Java didn't do that, but it, it works. But, um... It basically, when you go to create this, it grabs all the all the buttons and everything. Uh, I then grab the original width values of, of certain things. I try to get the spacing between it. So this is where I was talking about future proofing. If they change the spacing, this will update the spacing automatically. If they change the width, this will update the width values automatically. That way, this math down here is simply just oh, algebra. For example, setting the width here is just get the original width plus half of the change in the description width. So, of course, this, this is where I said some, whoever comes through here is going to have to recode uh, some data. The, it is assumed that the buttons, those three buttons at the bottom, which is the uh, play, install, and settings button, it assumes that these three will always be underneath this, and they will all three of their widths will always equal up to this. And, of course, that this settings button's width never changes, because this is meant to be, there's meant to be a gear here, although uh, because we're using this uh, weird bubble thing, the gear won't render, and I think I have to go to the library um, that I'm using, because I'm using, uh, I think, what's called JPhonics is what the name of the library is. I have to go see how they do images, and most likely I'm going to find out. I'm going to have to turn this back into a normal button like I have for this up here. These are normal buttons. That's a normal button. Uh, of course, there, I left the bug coding here. Big big tip if you guys are ever, ever coding continuously, just once in a while go in and just wipe your entire debug uh, uh, break uh, breakpoints out just so you don't forget. But it's working. And of course, uh, from the previous video, um, this still works. Still works really, really nice. This is easy though, because I don't have to change the height of this, uh, because these these little things in here will auto resize based on the what's inside of them, and you, you don't, then I don't have to mess with them. Um, of course, since the last video, I fixed the max resize here. So what, I don't know if you guys, I showed this in the original video, but the code was derped a little bit. So when you went like this and you slammed it back, this side would indent another inch. And it did it on the bottom panel too. Uh, although I'm still getting a little bit of the bottom panel. I think that's because I don't think I've relaunched since I fixed uh, the bottom panel issue either. 
so we're still getting this. I actually know what I forgot to do. Uh, I updated the, the size of this from 680 to 720. It still has the old data in it. That which I will go ahead and program, programmatically fix because I, right now it's a hard-coded value, but I need to just grab the value from the panel. Um, the original reason why it was hard-coded is I couldn't figure out why the minimum size was being set on the root panel. And then I didn't realize I'm only setting the minimum size on the base panel. So there's a base panel, and then that base panel is nested inside of a root panel. But you don't ever see the root panel unless you call get scene, get root and stuff. But I can fix that. But uh, this has been a really quick show-off video of this. Um, um, I'll probably have more of these later.